In this video, I'm going to talk to you about two things. The first thing is the state of the United Kingdom's ground-based air defence system. And the second thing is why whenever a politician opens their mouth, you must not believe a single word they are saying. And we'll start off by addressing this young lady. Penny Mordaunt then, I believe she was the MP for Portsmouth actually, calls for a British Iron Dome defence system. Now, click on the article and something interesting happens. Penny Mordaunt calls for an Iron Dome over Britain. House of Commons leader urges PM to increase security spending. Remember that, increased security spending as former ministers warn UK is not capable of protecting itself from attack. Now, before we go into something I want you to really be aware of, with these articles. I want you to also think, why are we increasing security spending? Why are we sending all this money to Ukraine? What's that about? Obviously, people need to make more weapons. Therefore, they can spend more money because we're paying people in defence. It's a bit of a racket. I've talked about it before, guys. Look at the date and time of this article. 20th of April this year at 9.30. That's interesting. Before we have a think about that, though, we just go back about five days and you may remember something about the Iron Dome of Israel being used to prevent an attack on its sovereign territory by the state of Iran. Of course, Israel attacked the Iranian embassy in Damascus, Syria, and then, of course, Iran then attacked um, Israel in response. And of course, yes, we understand there's a lot more to it than that. I'm just talking about the Iron Dome aspects of this, guys. Let's not get political on this right now. So we had the first article, but look, there's another one here from James Heapy, the former defence minister then, and his article was released also 20th of April at 9.30. Guys, you've got to start connecting the dots here. A message has gone out from the cabinet office. We need to put in the paper how vulnerable we are to foreign attack. Fear factor, F. Fear factor, I can't make an F in my hands. Fear factor, guys. Fear factor. So we want the population to be under the control of this current government. We need them to all go, oh my goodness me, what's up? More more money for defence. Yeah, let's do that, shall we? Let's put money into defence so we can rebuild all our weapon systems. How do we do that? By saying we need an iron dome. British Iron Dome would need to be even more sophisticated by Israel. Sophisticated? Expensive? I'm starting to sound like Russell Brand. And in this article then, James Heapy starts going into the grim reality in war, centres of industry, political make financial, critical infrastructure, all make appealing targets. Basically, you as a member of the population is a target, is what he's saying here. The Chief of Defence Staff has reflected on our homeland defence months ago in order a view of our systems and how they can be integrated to give the best possible protection. Look, the Chief of Defence Staff, who has been in charge of defence in some way or another for the last two or three decades. I don't want to drag this out, guys. I'm not a huge fan of Greg Bagwell at all. He was Deputy uh, Commander of the Royal Air Force and we did fall out on Twitter, although I have kind of been banned on Twitter for the week at the moment, which is actually quite nice. Uh, here, he, he waffles on quite a bit, but he also, the main thing is, look, 20th of April, about an hour before the others in the evening. So here's someone else who's aligned with the current political narrative. And in this, there's a lot where he just goes into some waffling at the beginning, which is exactly what you'd expect from a senior officer from the British military, who, in fact, let's just get down. It's one, it's an interesting one, this as well. We have become complacent at best, reckless at worst. Now, this was the deputy commander of the Royal Air Force. This is what happens when people leave. They they come out of the service and they say, oh my goodness, everything's so bad. We saw it with the uh, police commissioner of, of um, the Scottish police, Ian Livingstone, as well, when he said his force was institutionally racist as he left after five years in the job to go into a massive pension, we're seeing exactly this. Everything's really bad. We need more money to prop up defence. What was your job in the military? It was to speak out. That's what you had to do as a senior commander and you never did it and you wonder why I fell out with this man. The lack of integrity that we're seeing with some of these people when they do leave the military is absolutely shocking. And to not keep it any longer, Hamish de Breton Gordon, again, another warmonger, a couple of days before, just to add a bit of fuel to that fire, Ukraine's front line is collapsing. Britain may soon be at war. Fear factor. I can't even do the F. I wish I'd practiced this before I started the video. Unless we get a grip fast, we'll not be going to polling station in November, but to the enlistment centres. Remember I talked about conscription? Guys, hit the comments for me. Tell me I'm not being an idiot. Maybe I am. Look, all I'm saying is we know how this works. It is all about how can we get more money into defence away from the taxpayer. It regenerates. I, I, look, I'm not going to go into all the details. You know you know more about it than I do, in fact, to be fair. I'm just presenting you with what I'm seeing here. And here is an absolute warmonger. If you didn't think that Hamish or Greg or Penny or whoever the other people I've just put up here were, then this man absolutely is one of the biggest warmongers. Tobias Elwood, of course, the chair of the Defence Select 
committee. This man will not stop by telling you how the world is ending. Enemies of the West are preparing to use a tactical nuke. Sorry, I missed that phone call there, uh, Tobias. Um, was it an email you got about that? Or was it, wait, did someone write to you? Was it a carrier pigeon? How the fuck do you know what they're intending to do? Unlike in the Cold War, back channels have gone and treaties have lapsed. A nuclear weapon is likely to be fired within 10 years. I'm not a huge fan in case you haven't noticed. And I'm not gonna go into this absolute nonsense, but basically what he's saying is we're all gonna die, we're all gonna die, we're all gonna die. Yeah, we're all gonna die again. Most of us are already dead. China is gonna kill us, we're gonna die. And I'm not even gonna go to the comments because I think in there people do rip them apart. I did go into the comments and actually this one actually kind of makes my point. The whole aim of practical poli politics is to keep the populace alarmed and hence clamorous to be led to safety save us by menacing it with an endless series of hobgoblins all of them imaginary and here someone's written an article from the spectator where they're literally ripping him apart Tobias Elwood is wrong I don't want to go into too much details about this but basically it's saying what I'm saying here in this article where this the United Kingdom is, is 11 times the size I believe it is of Israel it wouldn't work now how are we currently defending the UK at the moment well the Royal Artillery has a Sky Sabre missile system which is what's called a short range short range air defense system pretty much replaced rapier which is point defense for royal air force airfields and other key locations it also has something else called the star streak hvm high velocity missile which i love by the way as an ex-tornado pilot no, i don't love it i love the fact that i'm very respectful of it let's have a look at these systems then very briefly shall we and uh there's a good piece on the actual i think actually to be fair on the army's website it's really really good and it goes into some detail but look if we look at sky saber then versus rapier you can see that sky Skyscaper, it's actually called Land Scepter as well. Goes out about 15 miles maximum. Now, there are extended range missiles, which will give it a little bit on a common missile. We'll have a look at that now. But again, it's a very small close-in missile system. I think we've got 24 of these. So there's no way we're protecting the whole of the United Kingdom. And that's where we use other capabilities. And I'll just address those quickly now. This is a great web page, actually, by the British Army. Fair play. It's got all their stuff in it. Big guns. We all like that. More big light guns. We like that as well. Oh, Things that fire out of rockets and shoot stuff. We like those. I think Ukraine's got most of those now, so we haven't got these anymore. Sky Saber, here we go. Still got some of those. I think some of them are in Poland at the moment. So I think we got about, I think it was, I think it was 24 systems. Uh, and we are looking at about a 15 mile range maximum on this at the moment. It's got a radar called the Giraffe. That's pretty good, isn't it? Giraffe. Uh, command and control units. And obviously the missile is a common missile that this Land Scepter Sky Saber uses. called the Common Anti-Air Modular Missile. I'm going to show you that. We'll quickly look at Star Streak and then I'll leave you alone. Here's the Common Anti-Air Modular Missile then uh, by MBDA. And again, it was based on ASRAM. However, it's now got active radar homing head in the missile. It says it's on Sea Scepter, which will replace Sea Wolf on Type 23s. It's, um, it looks like it's going to replace Aster, which is on Type 45s. It all gets a bit confusing. However, you've got different variants of this missile. So what we're trying to do is, is make defense more affordable, and that's only applaudable. We can't argue that at all. Different variants, of course, different ranges, slightly different payloads. But again, a pretty capable system, not many of them. And of course, the range is not actually that great. It's quite close in for point defense systems. If we are going to go even more into point defense systems then something that the uh, British Army can carry with them then we start looking at something called Star Streak HVM now there's not many things I'm frightened of as a British man maybe the mother law maybe a cold cup of tea however Star Streak HVM is something that used to keep me awake at night when I was on the tornado this thing is laser guided so it's very hard for me to detect anyway when I was flying probably wouldn't know it was coming it was about Mark 4 so four times the speed of sound off the rail as we call it is uber rapid very short range and really really hard to detect we can launch it in little machines like this off the shoulder we can put it in other vehicles uh it looks like that there we go it's it's just, that means nothing to you it's a laser beam rider basically and specifications mean something else to me i don't really know what that means but it doesn't go very high but for low flying aircraft that are coming into attack a target this thing is absolutely brutal and i know you want to have a look at a video of it but before we do that, let's look at the last thing that we have is the Type 45 destroyer fleet. Now, of course, this is designed, again, to stop missiles and aircraft coming to the United Kingdom. The problem with the Type 45 destroyer fleet is we only have six of them. Engines, when it got delivered, were a little bit messed up. So it's going through this power replacement program, I believe it is. Power Improvement Project. And so, so far, HMS Diamond, HMS Duncan, HMS Dauntless are currently available for operations, whereas Daring, Dragon and Defender are not. They're alongside somewhere. Now, don't get me wrong, fantastic ships. Once they run out of missiles, you haven't got any more missiles 
to shoot things at. And of course, they can't be everywhere at all times. We live on quite a big island. There's only six of them, only three of them serviceable. You might want to put one up by, by Scotland, maybe one down by Isle of Wight. And then you've got one that has to go east, west really quickly around the UK like that, just defeating all the missiles. I don't know. I'm not in the Navy anymore. But to end this video, then we'll just talk about this product, which is Star Streak HVM, which is a fantastic missile. You've got these boron tipped darts at the front there and all three of them come off and I think two are guaranteed to pretty much hit a target absolutely fascinating uh, it can take out drones rotary and fast jet albeit fast jets that are hanging around the area because the speed of a fast jet really doesn't lend itself to being shot down by close in weapon systems so you've got to be uber rapid uh, as you can see it coming off out the tube there we're going to see some firings on this I really like this system as I said close in Highly deployable, uber rapid. It comes out the tube there and pretty much is above Mark III within about 10 meters of the vehicle. Clearing the vehicle, then you get a secondary propulsion that accelerates the rocket towards the target vehicle. There's a helicopter being shot down. Pretty much God's work this missile's doing right now, isn't it? We don't need rotary anyway, do we? And you can see it can be fielded on a new a number of vehicles. Absolutely stunning. You see the fins deploy with Land Scepter or Sky Saber and Star Streak and the Type 45s. They kind of make up our ground-based air defense in the United Kingdom with a variety of radar systems as well to detect. These are the three darts actually spinning around each other. It's pretty much unescapable from if you get launched at. It is riding a laser beam. You should get some detection from a missile advanced warning system of laser activity to your aircraft. Look at that. Fantastic. Boom. There it is. So it's a great system. I'm a big fan, although I shouldn't be, of course, as a text, an ex-tornado mate. But again, very close in. Probably two, three kilometers max, I would have thought for this, really. And they are hitiles, which means they actually have to hit the aircraft as opposed to missiles that take a, a miss distance before they detonate and blast through the, uh, the aircraft it's going for. These things actually go through and penetrate the body of the aircraft. So guys, I hope that helps a little bit about me explaining it. And yes, I did get banned from Twitter because someone said, uh, when I said, look at the amazing English flag on the Nottingham Council Hall buildings, uh, someone said, well, Tim, uh, we're just going to take it down and replace it with an LGBT flag. And I said, if you did that, mate, we'd burn it down. Apparently Twitter didn't like that. So it banned me for a week. And actually I've had a great week off Twitter. Guys, in the comments, let me know what you think. Is this a conspiracy theory to get money into defence prior to an election in November? What is going on? I thought I'd talk to you about this. Tim Davies, Fast Jet Performance. <laughs>